Welcome to today's workshop presented by uh, Cumberland University's uh, University Assessment Committee. Today we're going to be talking about course assessment. Appreciate any of the adjuncts or full-time faculty or even par other part-time faculty that are joining us on today's webinar uh, or watching the recording uh, through YouTube. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about course assessment. It's a critically important component of uh, institutional effectiveness. Uh, universities are being tasked, being charged with uh, being able to uh, demonstrate that students are learning, that students are acquiring the skills, the content, the proficiencies that they're needing in order to be uh, effective professionals uh, once they matriculate and move on to their, into their professional careers. Uh, so that happens at the university level, it happens at the program level, and it most certainly happens we need to be assessing at the course level. So the goals of today's workshop, essentially what we're here to do, uh, we want to be able to discuss the who, what, where, how, and why of course assessment. Particularly, we want to spend some time with uh, emphasizing what is a CADS, a course assessment document, uh, and then also writing quality learning outcomes for courses. Um, what we'll do is we'll probably try to break this workshop up into three parts, um, make it a little bit more manageable for those that are going back and watching on YouTube. Um, but to start out, I would like us to talk a little bit about, you know, what is course assessment? I really like this analogy that our, uh, the president of Cumberland University, Dr. Paul Stum, that he uses. Uh, and it's, you know, feed, sorry, weigh the pig, feed the pig, and weigh the pig. You know, how do we know that when we get a student at the beginning of the semester, how do we know that what we do over the course of the semester demonstrates and yields um, results when it comes to uh, efficacy of learning? So in this case, we want to be able to particularly uh, tease out what is it that we're doing in a course that leads to quality student outcomes. Uh, Linda Susky, uh, I really encourage uh, those of you that are watching check out this uh, check out this link uh, at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the slide. Uh, Linda Susky has a blog on uh, on assessment, course assessment, program assessment, about anything assessment related to uh, colleges and universities, and she talks about course assessment. Um, one of her blogs, uh, particularly about uh, courses that have multiple sections. And this is the case, especially at Cumberland University. As our university continues to grow, we have courses, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think the head of our English department said that we have 21 sections of English Composition one this semester. But even in smaller programs where I teach in sport and exercise science, for example, we teach um, lifetime fitness both in the fall one section and lifetime fitness in the spring so according to Linda Susky uh, what we need to be doing for course level assessment is not assessing every single section independently of one another but maybe using aggregate data to be able to assess the course as a whole and so maybe for that English department maybe they need to assess English composition uh, on a semester basis. So in the fall, combining all sections of English Comp 1. Whereas maybe for exercise and sports science, we need to assess lifetime fitness on an annual cycle where we take uh, the section from the fall and the section of the spring and then look at that data together. And making sure that we have common objectives that run throughout all of those sections so that our fall course of lifetime fitness that it's the same objective same outcomes that we're trying to measure as we do in the spring now obviously we're going to uh, run into situations where we update those objectives and outcomes for a particular course and that's fine but we need to have a rationale for why we're developing new outcomes for a course and not just uh, shooting from the hip and coming up with new outcomes anytime that we want uh, but some very tangible, practical ways that uh, Susky says that we can do this uh, course level assessment. Uh, for example, maybe having a common rubric that all faculty across those sections of English composition or intro to business or U.S. History 1, maybe a common rubric that's used for a particular course project. And as a department, as a pr as the program faculty get together and give feedback on that, that rubric so that it's uh, so that it's a common rubric and it's used consistently in, in uh, the same way. Um, as well, maybe all the faculty across a particular program, so maybe in college algebra, if we're assessing 
a particular competency, a student learning outcome on the exam. Maybe it's the same five questions in every section of that course, and those five questions end up on the final exam. That way, all of those independent and individual faculty teaching those sections can go to the final exam, pull those five questions, take that aggregate data, and then feed that back into the course assessment. So there's some really good ways that we that we can do this course assessment where we're not operating in silos or islands amongst ourselves and we can really work together as program faculty. But that does require that all of our faculty, the full-time faculty, the adjunct faculty, part-time faculty, all work together on this. Which does, you know, it begs the question. And I think I kind of just answered this as far as who's responsible. Well, essentially all faculty at Cumberland University, all faculty in higher education are tasked with the responsibility of participating in course level assessment. Um, so we understand as full-time faculty and administration at Cumberland, adjuncts, your, your plates are full. Everybody's plates are full. We certainly don't want to pile more on you at the end of the semester. So one thing that I think we can do for our adjuncts, and we need your assistance on this, is let's be more proactive going into the semester with identifying what are our outcomes for a course, how do we want to measure those, and that way we're collecting data over the course of the semester. And if we do a better job of this, what's this going to allow us to do? In other words, why do we need assessment? Well, there's a few reasons. And the first and the primary reason is we want to influence and improve student learning. We want to be producing graduates at Cumberland University uh, that can go on and be successful in their professional careers. And the only way that we do that is we give them the skills, we give them the knowledge, we give them content that's going to uh, help them move on and be competitive in their professional careers. So we want to improve student learning. That's our primary objective. Next, I think that we want to be able to assess courses at the students at the course level so that that can then feed into program level assessment and then obviously then that would feed into university level assessment. At the end of the day, our regional accrediting body, SACCOC, uh, they say we have to do assessment and we have to do it well. Uh, so I think those are three reasons, but I think there might be a fourth one that we could throw in here. Uh, you know, as, as a professional, uh, you know, a full-time faculty member, uh, adjunct or even part-time faculty members, I think this improves the, the quality of our craft. You know, when, when you do, when I do a better job at course level assessment, I'm able to really refine and be able to take a look at and have data to back it up. What am I doing well and where do I need to improve? And yes, that will improve the quality of what, what students learn, but it also improves the quality of my teaching. So I think we've already mentioned this, uh, and we'll kind of finish up here and then we'll go on to part two. But uh, so to finish up part one, let's I really kind of have a, a good conceptual understanding of what we're trying to do with course level assessment and how that feeds into the university. So at, at the course level, we need to be doing this course, course level assessment, and we do that through, through our CADs. Uh, which we'll get to it in just a moment, but we really do need all instructors involved with this from full time all the way to our adjunct professors. And we need our adjunct professors. It's not from our full time down to our adjuncts. We really need adjuncts to be feeding back to our full time. What's working with that with course outcomes? What isn't working? Uh, what isn't clear when it comes to the way that some of the outcomes are, are written. And we'll get into that here in just a, just a little bit and make that a little bit more tangible for you. But essentially what we have here is we're gonna be looking at the course level assessment, which then needs to feed into program assessment. So at the course level, what are those knowledge and skills that the, that the student needs to acquire in the course? And then how does that feed into the program le level assessment? So what do, what do students or what do graduates from a particular program, what should they be acquiring um, as they move through the program? And then that should feed into what are the outcomes at the, at the university level? You know, certainly as full-time and part-time and adjuncts, we're all responsible for that at the course level. Uh, as we move on to the program level, that's primarily for full-time faculty and our program heads. And then at the university level, uh, the, the administrators, school deans, maybe even program heads are having some input into that. Uh, 
but the focus of today's workshop as we move forward, we're really just gonna kind of focus here on this course level assessment. So let's go ahead and wrap up there and then uh, in part two of the video, we're gonna spend some time with what is a CADS. Uh, beyond that, we're gonna take a look at uh, writing effective outcomes for courses, uh, some principles for writing effective uh, courses, but we'll get in, into that uh, next. Hopefully this video gave us a good conceptual understanding of who needs to be involved with assessment reports and why we do that for our students. See you in part two.